I don't think most people underestimate. Honestly, I'll put it this way. I think people that really know bodybuilding, I don't think that they underestimate him at all, whether that's his fellow competitors, whether that's guys that have been in his, his position in the past, whether that's greats of the sport that I've had discussions with. Um, I think the people that potentially underestimate him are the ones that just don't want to be real with themselves about the reality of what he's doing. Um, you know, his approach, how meticulous he is, how he doesn't miss a beat ever, you know, how his coach offers to give him cake on his birthday. And he says, no, you know, I'm good. Even though his body in that, in that time could have handled it, you know, so that's what people don't see. They see what they want to see. They see what people might say about him. That isn't true. Um, you know, but the people that truly know bodybuilding, that truly have an eye for the sport, I don't think that they underestimate him and what he's capable of by any means. He never shuts it off. He doesn't have an off switch. I think with a lot of guys, um, to some degree, whether they want to admit it or not, there is a definite defining moment when they go from a contest prep to an off season and then from an off season back into a contest prep. And that's what Nick doesn't have. You know, it's just basically whether the food's high, whether the food's low, whether the cardio output is high, whether it's low, everything is consistent throughout every phase of that. You know, there's not periods of time where he's reducing his water intake and having tons of diet soda. So every little variable within his plan at all times is always the same. And I think that's honestly why it makes my job as a coach, it, it, he, Nick makes my job easy um, because there's never unaccounted for variables. There's never things that I have to kind of figure out in the back of my head. Okay, is he doing this? Is he not doing this? Um, you know, when we start prep, is there going to be this monumentous shift in water weight simply because then I'm going to see what exactly was being followed what versus what wasn't being followed? That's never in question for me, you know? So in terms of his work ethic, it's day in and day out. You know, he does abs all off season long. Uh, he does the little things, the stretching all off season long. Every off day, he's doing body work to make sure that his body is in the best position it can be throughout every phase of his prep. If you put the work in that Nick's putting in, you would see so much of a greater potential or your, your genetic capabilities would be so much greater if you guys actually did the work that he's doing. As in terms of his quote unquote training age on stage, he still needs to gain more experience there. So I think one of the one of the things that I was most proud of him for was the transition of the Nick Walker that stepped on stage as a rookie in his pro debut last year in Atlanta versus the Nick Walker that stepped on stage this year in New York. Um, and, and basically what I saw was a guy that went from having a deer in the headlights kind of look to a guy that expected and anticipated to win the show and he conducted himself in that manner. Now we're going to go on to a bigger stage, you know, and one of the things that we were talking about this week is now he has three minutes of a routine that he has to work through. Um, and I want that to be professionally polished as if he's done it before, even though he hasn't, you know, and I think in the judge's eyes, if he shows up and he presents a physique that not only from a muscularity, from a conditioning, from a balance standpoint is there, but then he's also able to present that in a way of, hey, guys, like, I want this. I've been there before. I think he's going to get a better look if he goes into the show with that kind of confidence, working on the presentation, working on what he needs to do on the back end to really be a professional in terms of all aspects on stage. So that to me is one of the biggest things that I see that I want to see him continue to improve upon. Obviously from a physique standpoint, the biggest thing I think that we need is just more time, you know, because he's doing all the work, he's consistent as possible. And that over time is just going to translate to more density. Um, it's going to translate to a harder look without having to do anything other than what he's already doing in the gym and then more time doing those things that are working so well. We have specifically addressed some things within his back training this year that we've been working on. Um, we're, we're doing two back days. We're also loading his lower back more often in terms of you know, body weight supported movements, whether that be rowing movements, whether that be specific hip hinge deadlift variations. So we're also putting those back into place and I don't want to say we got away from them, but they weren't as consistent in the past. You know, we're, we're also very, very blessed to be here at Revive Gym. And there's so many good pieces of back equipment that we can choose from. Um, and again, for those of you guys watching this, just don't get distracted by the, the sexiness of equipment, so to speak. There's great equipment out there, but I still think to a greater degree for you young guys, nothing is going to compare to the density that you can build through doing compound movements from 
getting in a hip hinge position and rowing from that position, keeping your body strict rather than being chest supported all the time. I'm not saying there's not a place for that, but you have to do both to really build that complete physique. So that's one of the things that we're gonna continue to work on 